Hello, good evening. Thank you so much for joining us. This is the main news on Kamnet TV. My name is Sylvia Zulu. Here are the top stories making headlines in our news tonight. Sean Tembo condemns arrest of Chief Chikwa over alleged timber license violations. A civil society organization dismayed with Father Salengeta's political sermon. Sesco's revised Lord Shading schedule received with mixed reactions. In international news, seven political parties endorsed Kagame's presidential candidature. And in sports news, all set for weekend's Oriental Quarries Boxing Promotion Tournament. I will be back with the details after this break. Enjoy the benefits of an instant loan with us ranging from 1,000 kwacha to 750,000 kwacha paid express once collateral is viewed, valued and verified. Call us on 0763-595-359 or 0779-432-993. Classified Financial Express, here as your financial friend. Are you perplexed about how to overcome the financial, psychological, and mental health challenges around you? Well, worry no more because help is here. The Healing World Ministries International, in conjunction with Camnet TV, cordially invites the general public to a one-day seminar on mental health challenges and mental wellness solutions for individuals, families, the church, and society. Speakers include Dr. William Perry, President, Mental Health Association of Zambia, Dr. George Tafuna, Psychotherapist, Chinaime National Mental Health Hospital, Mr. Friday Salamo, Senior Mental Health Officer, the Ministry of Health, Professor Michael Munkumba, Executive Mentor and Life Coach, Mihachi Group, Bishop Peter Tanda Molenga, Presiding Bishop, Christian Word Center International, Pastor Lizzie Dakambuzi, President, Aglo International, and Dr. Evan Spiri from the Spirit of Faith Ministries. The venue is at the Healing Word Ministries International Church in Ibex Hill, Lusaka, on the 6th of April 2024, from 0830 hours to 17 hours at only 250 kwacha all round, food inclusive. You can get your tickets from Cabinet Office in Ibex Hill between 08 hours and 17 hours or you can buy via mobile money on 0962-965883 or 0979-753010. For more details, you can call 0962-965883 or 0979-753010. Don't miss, see you there. Thank you so much for staying with us. Another news in detail. Some Lusaka residents have welcomed the new load shedding schedule of eight hours divided in two phases of four hours a day, citing its convenience compared to the previous uninterrupted eight-hour schedule. In an interview with Cabinet News, Patrick Nyangulu, a popcorn vendor, highlights that the updated schedule facilitates better planning for small businesses like his. However, Roy Zimba, a welder in Lusaka's Kanyama compound, is concerned that the new schedule provides less working time to complete projects which will affect productivity. Following persistent outcries from the public of the uninterrupted eight-hour load shedding schedule, Zesco Limited has effective today, 1st March 2024, commenced a two-phase load shedding schedule, reducing the daily power outage to four hours a day. This development, which seemingly provides relief to small businesses whose operations are reliant on electricity, has been received with mixed response, with some expressing relief while others remain dissatisfied. In an interview with Camnet News, Patrick Nyangulu, a popcorn trader, is one of the individuals who are delighted with the newly implemented schedule, emphasizing its positive impact on his business. <laughs> Four hours. 
kwa stenzo usiwezi za manyingi sitivina watuma business tuunu ya kutinzo indai towers so ishe mwushewe iyo inda for hours kutitika siwe nza kunaisi magichi lufia a tailor has equally commended government for responding to their plight in due course so yeah many work up a mobile after it is end of four hours four hours i think he and karako will know but it didn't deserve to fuck up ya kaenda wana makastoma zi wakabwela siwa za hapo shota maniki kutia ati baenda waendele ya chifuka kulbe malaiti ah i'm sure it's very cool it's okay niswe nza wa kuset market malaiti munga ya mene mwaka mbati kazi enda four hours ya nkala kwa kuinu at least kuchila eight hours sometimes kuina nkuma nkala ati malaiti ya enda kuset ni kufikila ku 22 hours ndiye pe However, Roy Zimba, a ward of Kanyama compound in Osaka, has bemoaned the schedule citing the threat it poses to the productivity of his business. Iyo shedzo wa leta kwe ya nyo, ayifu tatuwa na itu ikana. Kaido ya mawa wazi ya yakula enderamu, ya rasa ngwa tiku, tuwala esarika. Umwene tu nifuwe mulia mayuthi, mulia wakara ambate ya wabu, ya wakwe tewe mpia ya kushani, pasangira mwe mpia umwe. So, ya ino wadi wala ndira tiyakura ya eight hours. Inga ya echi unguro ya wera, maybe nishita ya wera la munififi. Then that is what, pera of the time, uru chelu, until kuma eighteen hours, epo tisangu wakwe mpia. Tuwe wizinga maraiti, tule pange mpando. Walia wakara amba, wapusana, pusana, wale shio kere loko, so tule lomba kubuteku. Babwe shefe, ilia ineta wazi ya ya ingabu jitu, ya wero luchero, tuwa womba. Seju ilia inea liku ya ineta wazi, ilifebwe. Kukuchiro kwa ati yale ya three times in a day, which means ama wazi fufuwewa wombera kuno. Ama wazi ya kuwomba ya rache. So ilia inefe ya evo ya aliakari, ya alifebwe. Meanwhile, energy expert, engineer Bonface Zulu, says the newly implemented schedule provides a relief to the economy as it will boost productivity of small-medium enterprises, SMEs. Actually, a very good initiative because it can relate to the pain that ordinary families were first with of the eight-hour debt sharing, which of course uh, came into conflict with their productivity, especially with the CBD Chanda Mwango for Camnet News in Lusaka. Bus drivers at Lusaka's Kulima Tower bus station have hailed the government for maintaining fuel pump prices for April 2024. In an interview with Cabinet News, one of the bus drivers, Edward Machilika, suggests that the government should now consider a quarterly review of the commodity to facilitate better business planning for motorists across the country. Meanwhile, bus station vice chairman Christopher Sinkonga adds that following the concluded date restructuring, he expects fuel prices to begin to stabilize in the country. Fuel prices hold a pivotal role in the daily operations of motorists across the nation, particularly for those in the transportation sector, where fuel is the lifeblood of their business. I want to say thank you. Pari wa ARB, to amene swa na fakire fuero. Yeah, swa ni swa na fakire fuero, they've maintained that one. But to be honest, going forward, we want to see a situation where maybe three months they maintain the same price. Got in Kukwera, three months, Yakwera, Javaso. So the other thing also, our expectation, Mungapa, we expect, I think, with the debt structure, Yamena Chaika, obviously we expect the fuel to go down. Otherwise, the government can come back with Vinango. Sometimes, plan a Kurimushe. 
because you know in three months or about two months or four months somebody can plan and say okay i think within three months or it will be the benefit the energy regulation board erb on sunday 31st march 2024 announced that fuel prices would remain unchanged for april 2024 this decision was attributed to positive indicators in both international fuel prices and the local currency exchange rate no we are very grateful that uh, the fuel pump prices have been maintained but I think going forward, we're looking really forward to see to it that the government lowers the price of fuel so as to maintain our economic uh, uh, runnings. So with the debt restructuring actually, this uh, is it's really giving us confidence to say uh, the government probably going forward should look into it and see to it that uh, the fuel pump price is reduced to something to to, uh, to prices that are affordable. Also, in terms of uh, reviews, the government should come up with a strategy. These monthly reviews are really uh, hampering us. However, amidst the appreciation for the government's decision, there are calls for a more frequent review of fuel prices. Uh, there's a as bus drivers navigate the challenges of operating amid these fluctuating fuel prices, they remain hopeful for measures that offer greater stability in the months ahead. Chanda Mwango for Cabinet News in Lusaka. Governance and Development Advocate Zambia Executive Director Elias Mulenga has expressed concern regarding alleged remarks by Chawama Catholic priest Father Anthony Salangeta purportedly endorsing street vending. Mr. Mulenga charges that it is worrying for a clergyman to support activities that may foster lawlessness, particularly promoting vending in and hygienic environments. He highlights that Catholic priests with their theological background are expected to prioritize social justice, fairness and health, striving for a balanced approach. Mr. Mulenga adds that Father Salengeta, as a religious leader, must thrive to work alongside with the government and other stakeholders to educate citizens about the risk associated with trading in unsanitary conditions. It is a Good Friday message which has left some sections of society puzzled. Widely shared on social media, this is Chama Catholic Parish Priest, Father Anton Sarangeta, in his message likening social and economic challenges in the country to a never-ending Good Friday. Good Friday in the Christian calendar represents a sad day when Jesus Christ was betrayed and sold for 30 pieces of silver. Reacting to the sermon, however, Governance and Development Advocates Zambia has expressed disappointment, accusing the clergyman of promoting activities of lawlessness such as street vending. Organization Executive Director Eras Mulenga is also concerned that the father is blaming government for load shedding which is attributed to the lack of rainfall. It is particularly surprising that a clergyman would advocate for activities that could lead to lawlessness in the country, especially aging vendors to return to trading in unsanitary conditions. This is alarming given that the country is just coming from a devastating cholera pandemic. Mr. Mlenga is of the view that the church should concentrate on preaching salvation and promoting activities of love. We urge members of the public not to follow this father who is misleading people and the nation because he is calling for activities that does not represent 
the goodwill of the people of Zambia. He's talking about road shedding when he knows that the country has been experiencing a drought. Where does he expect electricity to come from? For Kamnet TV News, Hafias Kaptula, Lusaka. Nkayama Member of Parliament, Kapelua Bangueta, is urging the youth in the area to take full advantage of the empowerment programs initiated by the government. During a certificate and driving license distribution ceremony held at Kamakokwa Ward, the Member of Parliament emphasized the importance of utilizing the opportunities provided through the Constituency Development Fund, CDF. Several beneficiaries of the skills empowerment have expressed gratitude to the government for the support. Yema member of parliament, Kapirombangueta, has encouraged the youth to utilize the government empowerment programs. During a ceremony held at Kamakoko Ward, Kema member of parliament urged the youth in the area to take full advantage of the government his empowerment program initiative support. The Member of Parliament, who is also Western Province Minister, Kapirombangueta, emphasized that the government remains committed to empowering young people, enabling them to become productive citizens who contribute to the nation-building process. We want to encourage you to make use of your licenses, to make use of the empowerment programs which this government is putting forward. Last week that the CEC were giving out various uh, types of uh, vehicles, so there is no reason why some among you cannot also apply and qualify and get uh, a vehicle or two. We want to see so that you become employers in your own right. Other noted speakers at the event included the Kema District Commission, Elis Mkuvesa, and the Kema Council Secretary, Dr. The President, Mr. Haka in the Hichilema, has fulfilled his promises, and today we are witness. And, uh, today, uh, all the 71 students have successfully uh, completed their, their course at a total cost of 461,000 kwacha. And uh, today, this is very important for us as the Kema Town Council and District at large because one of the students who has graduated today has already been employed by Nkema Town Council. So that meaning, meaning that uh, when the government sponsors the students, it's our duty to provide an opportunity to employ them, it's our duty to provide an opportunity or, or for them to begin to function so that their training begin to change their lives. So we are grateful on, on, on that. Several beneficiaries of the skills training express their gratitude to the government for the empowerment initiative. <laughs> Kema Town Council, through the Constraints Development Fund, his skills development component, officially presented certificate and driving licenses to 71 youths from Kamakoko Ward who had undergone training at the Zambia School of Driving. Mosia Hukavila for Comnet News in Kema District, Western Province. Government says it met the benchmark for its date to be restructured. Ministry of Information and Media Permanent Secretary Tabo Kawana says Zambia satisfied the date sustainability analysis DSA and the date carrying capacity DCC. Mr. Kawana says some dorm sayers from the previous government wished that the date restructuring deal failed as they themselves had failed to reach the date agreement. The Information and Media Permanent Secretary says date restructuring requires a lot of dedication, hard work and discipline, which the UPND-led government under President Hakainde Hichilema have exhibited. For you to restructure your date, there are two things that you must satisfy. Number one, it is the date sustainability analysis, the DSA. And once you have satisfied that, you move to the second stage. 
which is the debt carrying capacity of the DCC if you want. Zambia has satisfied both benchmarks with flying cars and that is why today we have been able to uh, restructure our debt. You know there's uh, a lot of uh, doomsayers uh, that would have wished that this should not work, that would have wished that the country fails to do that and some of them are coming from the previous government. Now you know that they failed to reach this uh, debt, debt agreement they managed to just get the debt, but they failed to reach an agreement in, in as far as restructuring is concerned. Because to do this, you require a lot of dedication and a lot of hard work and a lot of discipline. And that's what they didn't have. They don't have hard work, they don't have discipline, they don't have commitment. And that is why they failed to agree to reach at a debt restructuring you know, agreement. But this government led by this particular president is determined, is serious, and that is why even the international community has come on board to ensure that we satisfy that which we are set out to do, and that is to rebuild our economy. They made history by making Zambia the first country in Africa to default. We have made the same history in the positive by making Zambia the first country to restructure its deal under the G20 framework. And now, that calls for a lot of hard work, a lot of dedication, and a lot of commitment. And that's who we are. Patriots for Economic Progress, PEP President Sean Tembo has described the recent arrest of Chief Chikwa of Senga people of Chama District in Eastern Province as harassment. Mr. Tembo says the arresting of the traditional leader for alleged harvest of timber is uncalled for as chiefdom mainly lay in a game reserve and its president would want trees for firewood and other domestic needs. He has called for the withdrawal of all charges leveled against Chief Chikwa by the police and the Department of Wildlife and Forest to be withdrawn immediately. On Sunday, the police arrested Chief Chikwa, who was released on bond for sublating his timber license to foreign nationals, violating Section 61 of the Forest Act, as well as Section 89 of the Forest Act by being in illegal possession of forest produce. Consent, and we wish to condemn in the strongest terms possible the arrest yesterday of Chief Chikwa of Chama District of Eastern Province for the alleged offense of cutting down trees in his chiefdom. We feel that this arrest was draconian and it amounted to harassment of the chief because when you look at Chief Chikwa, you realize that his uh, chiefdom lies almost entirely in the Chikwa game management area and uh, there are people living there and these people have various domestic requirements which require trees uh, whether they want to construct a house or they want to clear some land for cultivation inevitably they have to cut one or two trees and so for the so-called joint operations team of Zambia Police, Department of uh, National Parks and Wildlife and other agencies to decide to arrest the chief on the alleged offense of cutting down trees, we feel that that is uncalled for and it amounts to harassment. And so we call for the immediate withdrawal of these charges. Uh, we are aware that the chief has since been granted police bond, but these charges should be withdrawn in the interest of peace for the citizens and the subjects of Chikwa district. A legal practitioner has called the handing over of Mopani copper mine to a new investor by government illegal. In an interview, Celestine Makandila says Zambian constitution requires that any asset of Mopani's nature to be transferred, it must pass the two-third majority vote of members of parliament, which was not done. Council Makandila adds with no request on the matter presented to the House, entails a legal clinch in the transfer of Mopani to international resources holdings.
On the 21st of March 2024, His Excellency the President, Mr. Hakainde Hichilema, handed over Mopani Copper Mines to a new investor. In his speech at the relaunch of Mopani Copper Mines, the President said the partnership with the new investor, International Resources Holding, from Abu Dhabi, is not a handover but a meticulous negotiated partnership with IRH that represents mutual respect and equitable benefits for Zambia. Commenting on the handover, legal practitioner Celestine Mukandila says the partnership between government and the new investor is illegal due to the fact that the handover did not follow the Zambia's constitution that stipulates that for every transfer of a state asset, the National Assembly must vote and the request must pass two-thirds majority of the House of Zambia under article 210 and um, sub article 2 and uh, 3 has provided for a way in which a state a major state asset can be disposed of transferred or as the case may be so so clearly it shows that in order to do that in order to do that that particular sale or transfer or uh, anything else that can be done to an equity or a major state um, uh, asset has to go before the National Assembly and it has to be voted by two-third majority of members of parliament. Now in this case it is clear that our colleagues when giving the shareholder um, uh, approval did not submit that request before the House, before the National Assembly for approval and that is a legal glitch which is uh, going to make or which makes the entire deal unconstitutional because it means that shareholder agreement seated on the document uh, appear to be um, uh, unconstitutional and illegal. Council Mkandila says the deal needed shareholder approval of which that did not happen. Condition precedents that were required for this deal to be sealed as um, uh, it should be is a shareholder um, approval. Now, the shareholder approval ought to have come from ZCMIH. Now, the question is, who are the shareholders of ZCMIH? The shareholders of ZCMIH include IDC, which is the major shareholder in uh, ZCMIH. We've got NAPSA, which has got a, 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 about uh, a 15% shareholding. We've got GRZ, or the Minister of Finance, who has about 17 point something percent uh, shareholding in ZCMIH. Now, those are the shareholders who ought to have given the shareholder approval. One is left to wonder, with the alleged legal glitches in the Mopanic mine deal, if this will hinder the success of the new investor. Cherish Sibote, for Kamnet News, Lusaka. Advocates for National Development and Democracy, AMDD Executive Director Samuel Banda, has urged government through the Ministry of Small and Medium Enterprise Development to consider introducing incentives for the small and medium business owners. Speaking in an interview, Mr. Banda says the small and medium business owners play an important role in contributing to national development. The Ministry of Small and Medium Enterprise Development is scheduled to host the first ever Macro Small and Medium Enterprises and Cooperatives National Indara, which will run from 10th to 11th April 2024. Small and medium enterprise or SMEs serve as the cornerstone of economic growth contributing significantly to job creation, innovation and overall prosperity. These enterprises often run by dedicated entrepreneurs with ambitions, visions, play a vital role in sustaining local economics and fostering community development. Despite their significance, SMEs face numerous challenges ranging from limited access to finances, resources to regulate hurdles and insufficiency deficiencies. Tom 
Njovu, who runs a peanut butter business in Lusaka Soweto Market, is pleased with the ministry's initiative to harness power of collaboration, which will foster SMEs cooperative for sustainable and economic growth. Mr. Njovu highlights the challenges and his expectations from the Ministry of Small and Medium Enterprise. Um, Recognizing the pivotal role of SMEs, Advocate for National Development and Democracy, Executive Director Samuel Banda has called on government to consider giving the small and medium business owners incentives. And what the government needs to do is that they must ensure that they give incentives to show the impact of low shading on these uh, SMEs. Uh, for example, government can use the economic citizens' empowerment uh, ship uh, to give uh, a certain incentive just to cushion on the loss of revenue. Mr. Banda emphasizes the need for tailored policies and intervention to support SMEs. It is very important the government, through the Ministry of SMEs, come up with deliberate policies to empower our local SMEs and also to create a conducive environment for them uh, to grow. Now, with these economic uh, factors, uh, load shedding, uh, depreciation of the culture, these factors are hindering the growth of SMEs. For example, the Ministry of Small and Medium Enterprise is set to run a national endeavor for SMEs. The platform is meant to enhance the exchange of ideas and knowledge among the small and medium business owners. Prudence Chiwe for Kamne TV News, Lusaka. You're watching the main news with me, Sylvia Zulu. We now take our first break to join me with more news after the break. Are you looking for a reliable and efficient courier company with international standards? Then let UBZ Courier, your trusted partner in swift and secure deliveries, be your ultimate choice. Whether it's a small package or a hefty consignment, UBZ Courier handles it all locally and internationally. Our modern call center ensures personalized attention for every client. For seamless deliveries within Zambia and beyond, trust UBZ Courier. Call us now on plus 260-763-062-680 or visit us at plot number 15, Mwapona Road, Woodland, Lusaka, Zambia. UBZ Courier, a world-class brand that can be trusted. Potatoes, the unsung heroes of flavor. From crispy chips to creamy mush, potatoes are the versatile superstars of your kitchen. Grown with love by our dedicated workforce drawn from around the community of Palavana. Savenda Farm's commitment is to see to it that we have potatoes that are grown right, healthy, big and tasty. For that quick fix or big celebration or that meal that brings family together, Top chefs rely on the Savenda potato to create culinary masterpieces. And for others, it's that icebreaker to a delightful conversation. So, embrace the magic of Savenda potatoes. They're not just a side dish, they're the heart and soul of your kitchen. Savenda, save nations, develop Africa. Enjoy the benefits of an instant loan with us ranging from 1,000 kwacha to 750,000 kwacha paid express once collateral is viewed, valued and verified. Call us on 0763-595-359 or 0779-432-993. Classified Financial Express, here as your financial friend.
this impending drought, it's time we look to alternatives of sustaining our crops. We as ISDP are promoting irrigation and water harvesting as the solution to challenges posed by climate change. Watch our 13-week series as we unfold the solutions for our crops. Catch us every Monday at 2040 hours, repeats every Tuesday at 1910. Are you perplexed about how to overcome the financial, psychological, and mental health challenges around you? Well, worry no more because help is here. The Healing World Ministries International, in conjunction with Camnet TV, cordially invites the general public to a one-day seminar on mental health challenges and mental wellness solutions for individuals, families, the church, and society. Speakers include Dr. William Perry, President, Mental Health Association of Zambia, Dr. George Tafuna, Psychotherapist, Chinaime National Mental Health Hospital, Mr. Friden Salamo, Senior Mental Health Officer, the Ministry of Health, Professor Michael Munkumba, Executive Mentor and Life Coach, Mihachi Group, Bishop Peter Tanda Molenga, Presiding Bishop, Christian Word Center International, Pastor Lizzie Dakambuzi, President, Aglo International, and Dr. Evan Spiri from the Spirit of Faith Ministries. The venue is at the Healing Word Ministries International Church in Ibex Hill, Lusaka, on the 6th of April 2024, from 0830 hours to 17 hours at only 250 kwacha all round, food inclusive. You can get your tickets from Camnet office in Ibex Hill between 08 hours and 17 hours or you can buy via mobile money on 0962 965883 or 0979 753010. For more details, you can call 0962 965883 or 0979 753010. Don't miss See you there. Nangu matinda, yapo kibwanji muziko. Swevo tatuti owe. Mwamileza, pula andi swe. Pula tu wabili la toba na bagwe. Taka tulegele li. Thank you so much for staying with us. We now continue with more news. Police in Eastern Province, Chadiza District, have charged and arrested Christopher Basilio Banda for conduct likely to cause the breach of peace. Police Deputy Public Relations Officer Danny Mwale says Mr. Banda was picked up after he became unruly at a bar at Chadiza Market Square on March 31st, around 23.30 hours. Mr. Mwale adds that the 37-year-old was driving a branded vehicle of a non-television station and was detained and later released after paying the admission of duty fine. Police in Chadiza charged and arrested Christopher Basilio Banda for conduct likely to cause the breach of peace. Mr. Banda, 37, was picked at a bar by officers who were on patrol at Chadiza Market Square on March 31, 2024, around 23.30 hours. This happened after officers engaged the owner of a named bar to close, but Mr. Banda, who was driving a branded Prime TV motor vehicle, appeared at the bar and upon being advised that he needed to go home since the bar was closing, he became unruly. He was picked and detained in police custody. He has since been released after paying admission of duty fine. Government in Southern Province has intensified the drive to discourage bush burning among communities in light of the drought which has affected 84 districts. Government is discouraging bushfires. A bushfire of this magnitude 
can either be a result of natural causes or due to human activity. This fire that has now engulfed the one slash green plains of some parts of the Kafue River, leaving a trail of ash, is a result of traditional bush burning activity. This has raised concern to government on the effect of bush burning, not only on the ecosystem in the Kafue River Plain, but also on how such human activity will exacerbate effects of climate change. Southern Province Minister Credo Nanjua, who has led a team of technocrats, visited fishing camps along the Kafue River in Mazabuka, Monze, Namwala, and Itezitezi districts to heighten sensitization against this vice. Kambo kutwa hila kono basa, kambo ka utenta masanga, na kumpabu isu, iso gwe. Gajirija kusobana, wala abu yobu endo machezi, mbwari ya nine sanga, wajita buti, wali tenta. Wamana wali pundatinya mkwa murilo, jeda jaga mana. So hatu sebezera ntomui, mtu atente sanga, mwamujita report. Other ministers are also equally concerned about this situation. Catching fish is not about burning. That science is a wrong science and you must stop. I'll keep on sending my officers to come and explain to you better ways of managing our natural water bodies so that we don't compromise with the production of fish. Because could climate change to abule fiakulia. Because could climate change to abula mesh. If chalo, ngawa oche chani. My years younger, ni 14 years. No man defu a nundepo. Not wakusanga na filafia koche la kwechani. Ni 7 years. The community have received these submissions. Mwamu mm. amba kuti, mtu umpa sokwe. Mgu 14 years kwa angwa. Alimusunu, bai buku besu ava. Mgudi mwimi nizi wawa mami. Nakuti, nakuwa kuti, mwana akwe umpa sokwe. Nakuwa kuti, mtu ulibuti ya umpa sokwe. Waja tuwa vo. Ono tuwa tambula, tujisingu uzi libo, tuwa anjina nguzu. Liseli Semusole, reporting for Zanis, Southern Province. Still to come in the news, all set for weekend's Oriental Quarries Boxing Promotion Tournament. I will be back with the details as well as some international stories. Stay tuned. Introducing Darren B, a touch of class. Are you looking for the perfect place to elevate your style and glam up? Look no further. Darren B Touch of Class is your one-stop destination for hair and makeup transformation. Walk into Darren B and walk out feeling like a star. Your transformation starts here. Call us on 0772-870-588 or WhatsApp on 0972-0972. 049213 to book your appointment today. Payments are made via mobile money or point of sale machine. Strictly no cash payments. We are located along Mossy Road in Ibex Hill, fourth close on the left after Kalikiliki Police Post. At Darren Bay, we pride ourselves on our team of dedicated and trained personnel ready to pamper both women and children. Darren B is open seven days a week from 0720 hours to 1740 hours. From trendy hairstyles and stylish makeovers to flawless makeup, we do it all. Darren B, a touch of class. Enjoy the benefits of an instant loan with us ranging from 1,000 kwacha to 750,000 kwacha paid express once collateral is viewed, valued and verified. Call us on 0763-595-359 or 0779-432-993. Classified Financial Express, here as your financial friend. This impending drought, it's time we look to alternatives of sustaining our crops.
We as ISDP are promoting irrigation and water harvesting as the solution to challenges posed by climate change. Watch our 13-week series as we unfold the solutions for our crops. Catch us every Monday at 2040 hours, repeats every Tuesday at 1910. Are you perplexed about how to overcome the financial, psychological, and mental health challenges around you? Well, worry no more because help is here. The Healing World Ministries International, in conjunction with Camnet TV, cordially invites the general public to a one-day seminar on mental health challenges and mental wellness solutions for individuals, families, the church, and society. Speakers include Dr. William Perry, President, Mental Health Association of Zambia, Dr. George Tafuna, Psychotherapist, Chinaime National Mental Health Hospital, Mr. Friday Salamo, Senior Mental Health Officer, the Ministry of Health, Professor Michael Munkumba, Executive Mentor and Life Coach, Mihachi Group, Bishop Peter Tanda Molenga, Presiding Bishop, Christian Word Center International, Pastor Lizzie Dakambuzi, President, Aglo International, and Dr. Evan Spiri from the Spirit of Faith Ministries. The venue is at the Healing Word Ministries International Church in Ibex Hill, Lusaka, on the 6th of April 2024, from 0830 hours to 17 hours at only 250 kwacha all round, food inclusive. You can get your tickets from Cabinet Office in Ibex Hill between 08 hours and 17 hours, or you can buy via mobile money on 0962 965883 or 0979 753. One zero. For more details, you can call 0962 965883 or 0979 753010. Don't miss, see you there. In international news, Rwanda's President Paul Kagame has been endorsed as candidate by two of the oldest political parties in the East African nation. Liberal Party PL and the Social Democratic Party PSD endorsed the Rwanda Patriotic Front RPF candidate Paul Kagame in the July presidential race on Sunday. Joining four smaller political parties which are already in a collision with the ruling RPF in endorsing Kagame. Allied to the ruling party leaders of the PL and PSD have historically served in different government positions. Kagame, 66, has ruled over Rwanda for decades. He won the presidency in elections in 2003, 2010 and 2017 with more than 90% of the vote. Critics and rights groups accuse him of ruling in a climate of fear that stifles dissent and free speech. For this and other international stories, we monitored African news. Two of the oldest and political parties in Rwanda, the Liberal Party, PL, and the Social Democratic Party, PSD, have endorsed the Rwanda Patriotic Front, RPF candidate, Paul Kagame, in the July presidential race. The two joined four smaller political parties, which are already in a coalition with the ruling RPF in endorsing President Kagame. While announcing his party's endorsement, Foreign Minister Vincent Biruta, the PSD president, said, it is a good thing that President Kagame acknowledges and considers ideas from other political parties. While the East African nation lays claim to being one of the most stable countries in Africa, right groups accuse Kagame of ruling in a climate of fear that stifles dissent and free speech. The 66-year-old Kagame has ruled over Rwanda for decades and won the presidency in elections in 2003, 
2010 and 2017 with more than 90 percent of the vote. Rwanda will hold presidential and parliamentary polls on July 15 after the government decided last year to synchronize the dates for the votes. Ethiopia will repatriate some 70,000 of its nationals living in Saudi Arabia starting early April. State Minister Birtu Kanayano said the repatriation of the third such program since 2018 will target Ethiopians who are in a difficult situation. During the announcement last week, the minister did not specify whether the returnees have been living in Saudi Arabia legally. Regional administrations are expected to ensure the returnees resettle in their native home areas. According to government dispatch, repatriation expenses will include flight tickets, temporary holding at transition centers in Addis Ababa, and some money to restart life. Ethiopia currently hosts about 917,000 refugees from neighboring countries such as Yemen. Data from the Ethiopian Refugees and Returnees Service also estimates that 4 million Ethiopians have been displaced due to the nation's own conflict and environmental hardships. There have been funding cuts meant for these groups, however. In March 2022, Addis Ababa struck a deal with Riyadh to repatriate over 100,000 of its nationals. Rights groups accused Saudi Arabia of mistreating foreign laborers. April's total solar eclipse promises to be a scientific bonanza thanks to new spacecraft and telescopes and cosmic chance. Portland Community College physics professor Toby Dietrich plans to perform a modern version of editing experiment during the eclipse. During this eclipse on April 8th, uh, I'm going to be performing the modern Eddington experiment, which is an experiment that measures the tiny deflection of light, bending of light, as it passes the sun on its way in, into our camera. The original experiment was first done during the 1919 total solar eclipse by a team of scientists off the coast of Africa that tested Albert Einstein's theory of relativity. The moon moves around the Earth, and the Earth, as it moves around the sun, at some point, the moon becomes exactly between the sun and the earth, and you can see a shadow right there. That shadow moves from west to east across the American continent. Scientists got a taste of what's to come during the 2017 total solar eclipse that stretched from Oregon to South Carolina. The the point now of a continuing to perform this experiment in, on April 8th is because we can do it infinitely better. We can get way, way more data. We can get data close to the surface of the sun where the bending is the maximum. April's eclipse will begin in the Pacific and make landfall at the Mazatlan, Mexico, heading up through Texas and 14 other U.S. states. Oriental Quarries Boxing Promotion says all is set for this weekend's championship tournament slated for 6th April 2024 at Government Complex in Lusaka. Speaking during a press conference, Oriental Quarries Boxing Promotion Manager Christopher Malunga says the company has ensured sufficient security at the venue and aging funds to come in numbers. One of the fighters at the tournament, David Mwale, says he is prepared for this Saturday's match, promising to put a good fight. Oriental Quarries Boxing Promotion has announced that all is set for the championship tournament scheduled for April 6th at Lusaka's government complex. Speaking during a press conference, Oriental Quarries Boxing Promotion's manager, Christopher Malunga, says the tournament will take place as they have met the 30% balance they needed and the tournament delegates will be in the country by Thursday. Mr. Malunga has also called on the government to step up and introduce amateur boxing in all provinces so that the country has a wide selection of boxers to represent the country and not only from one region. In terms of you know, trying to make sure that the budget is met, I think uh, where we are now, we are very, very safe. I don't think there's uh, the way of turning back 
Uh, this is a very, very important uh, tournament, and uh, we are happy that it has been sanctioned by FOA, the African Boxing Union, uh, who are the sanctioning body of this uh, government can take the sport to all the provinces at a later say, stage it can trickle down to the district then you'll see Zambia boxing did well at the uh, uh, Africa games with one province and coach Michael Zulu says he has adequately prepared the boxers for Saturday's tournament and wishes them all the best I left no stone and chant, knowing that this fight is very important you know defending is not like when you are challenging when you're defending you lose. When you lose, you lose everything. So I, I, I put all the effort to, into it to see, to see to it that uh, the champion defends the title. Because we wouldn't love to lose it just there and then. And uh, just uh, with a few, few weights, I would just say I'm appealing to the fans out there to come in numbers and cheer, and cheer us up so that we defend this title. Meanwhile, men bout boxer David Mwale has assured fans that he will put up a great fight on Saturday. I'm sure that I'm going to put up a good fight. Uh, yeah, there's a new style. Next step. 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 To concentrate and to remain focused so that you know, more wins and more promotion to come. More the best. Cherish Sibote. For Kamnet News, Lusaka. Well, that's it for our main news tonight. Here's a recap of the stories making headlines. Sean Tembo condemns arrest of Chief Chikwa over alleged timber license violations. A civil society organization dismayed with Father Salengeta's political sermon. Zesco's revised load shading schedule received with mixed reactions. In international news, seven political parties endorse Kagame's presidential candidature. And in sports news, all is set for weekend's Oriental Quarries Boxing Promotion Tournament. Our verse for the day is coming from the book of Proverbs 21, verse 20. In the house of the wise are stores of choice, food, and oil, but a foolish man devours all he has. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Sylvia Zulu. Good night.